In this video, I'm going to be showing you a new software called Paper Digest. This is actually a different software than the Paper Digest I talk about that does summarizations. I'll have that link below if you're interested, but this one actually creates literature reviews using AI. So this is the software here. It's at paperdigest.org slash review, and I will have that link in the description below if you just want to click on it. And basically it will allow you to do literature reviews. So what it's gonna do is you put in keywords, it goes out and finds the most relevant work to that and will actually create a summarization of what that work does. And it can actually give you a really good starting place for one, if you're trying to learn your field, or secondly, if you're trying to start working on a literature review, it gives you a really good starting place for that. If you're just getting started in your field, use my 30 day research jump start guide to help you find papers like this and also to help you develop research ideas from those papers. So I am, because I know the field so well, going to type in steroid and ion mobility. And so you can actually select areas here. So in this case, you could I could just select chemistry. I could just select like other natural sciences, humanities, social science, so that you're not getting a lot of things coming from a lot of different areas into the same thing. I'm gonna select all areas here because steroids and mobility tend to be both in chemistry and biology. And when I ran this just in chemistry, I didn't get really good results. So I would suggest running it with all areas first. And then if you're seeing like a lot of weird things coming in, then choosing a specific area. You can do it from papers or patents. I'm gonna do papers because I'm not very interested in patents. And then you can do any time the past five years or the past year. So let's start with any time. And we're just gonna press search. And so what this first is gonna give us is related work, which it's giving us 10 different things that we could use. So that's actually a really good place where you could start trying to figure out your literature story is with these papers it's giving us here. And we can see this is 2015, 2016, 17, 18, 19, 19, 20, and 2022. So it's actually giving it to us in chronological order as well. So then what we can get once we know the different papers is it actually gives us a little paragraph summary here of what's going on. So basically they were probably analyzing for basically people taking what we typically like in the vernacular say as steroids, but basically anabolic steroids. And so they were able to find that conjugate by using it CCS. So that was a really, really early use of analyzing steroids. So like for me, if I was doing a literature review, this would be more in my introduction. It wouldn't be part of my literature story. And then it's showing this Schoenard et al paper, and it's showing that drift to biomobility is a promising use then this Fangs paper looks at the signal to noise ratio and increases it from isobaric interferences in the matrix. This is my paper. TWIMS was employed to separate out multimer steroid metal adducts. This work aimed at the further development of IMS for the separation of that. And then this one is a new paper. So when coupled to LC, IMS provides novel characterization of the CCS as well as improves methods, selectivity, and sensitivity by separation. Yeah. So this is one that I actually included in my literature review on steroid analysis by ion mobility, which is looking at phase two steroid metabolites. So this is similar to this first paper up here. So this is my review, it is examine the current literature. So that's a review in there. And that's one thing is by looking at this, like you can see here's my review right here. That's kind of giving you an idea if there's already a review on this topic as well with this software. And then you have a few more. Now I will say it's not taking all of papers that I would have expected it to pull in. So I definitely wouldn't just base your literature review off of what this gives you if you're trying to do a literature review. But if you're just trying to get started and saying like, okay, what paper should I even look at? This is a good place to start. Don't just use this. So for example, even my work, it has my second paper, my first paper on this, and then it has my review. There's at least two more papers that I would have expected it to pull in. And there's even papers that I would kind of expect it to pull in that aren't even mine that I know about in this field. So definitely like a good place to get started. You can start understanding what's going on within each of these papers, seeing which ones fit, which one doesn't fit without having to go out there and try and figure out a new paper for everything. But overall, 
I would use this as a starting place. If you're like, oh, I'm interested in writing lit review or I'm interested in learning this field, let me type in something. Do that. And then I would expand to using Google Scholar or something like Research Rabbit. I'll have a link to how to use Research Rabbit to find papers and outline a lit review as well. Now, what I am interested in is what if we do different time scales? So if I'm just looking in the past five years, this would be 2018, 2018. So you see now it's picking up some of those papers I was expecting it to pick up before. And so the nice thing is that this summary is giving us kind of the impacts for these results. Like instead of giving us all of the information about like the approach and everything like that, it's really just telling us like you can see this demonstrates the potential of coupling these together. You know, it's it's giving us really mainly the impact of of the different results. And I think it's literally taking these verbatim from the actual papers. So I, so far I'm not seeing anything in here that it's like this took something weird or reanalyzed something. I think it's actually taking snippets from these papers or at least from maybe the abstracts of these papers to put this together. So I would say I would trust most of the things it's saying in here. And it's a good way to like find new papers. I mean, I have been out of this field for a while. So like, this comprehensive steroid assay, like that would be really interesting. And I think that's something that I should read. So it, it might be a way to like stay up on your field too. This is also a good place to start looking for papers and then use something like Research Rabbit to find more similar papers to the ones that are specifically in here. If you wanna get started doing that, I will have a video linked up here that is all about how to use Research Rabbit to create a literature review outline. I'll have my entire organizing literature playlist linked over here. If this video was helpful for you, please like it and subscribe to the channel below if you want to get more videos on how to become a more efficient researcher. I hope this video was helpful and I look forward to seeing you in my next one.